Burn Make ready. Freeze and fire. This weekend we are commemorating the 204th anniversary of the Battle of New Orleans. The observance has been organized by St. Bernard Parish Government, St. Bernard Parish Tourist Commission, and St. Bernard Parish School Board. The, our parish leaders were determined that this important anniversary would not go unobserved, uncelebrated in 2019. So we're doing things here at Torres Park. We're actually here on a piece of the extended battlefield so that there is some appropriateness to the site. And we have a very great, very nice, small, but excellent quality assemblage of living history volunteers who will be reenacting part who will be reenacting camp life in 1815 musket demonstrations artillery demonstrations so it will be a full complement of things happening here at the battlefield we also have this weekend the Nunez Community College Battle of the Orleans Symposium which will be taking place at Nunez College and at the St. Bernard Parish government building you light this park and there's gunpowder inside. Yeah, and the bravest of the brave, the toughest of the tough, would run up to the castle wall and throw it. So gunpowder blows up when you light it on fire. Right. I represent a sergeant in the Battalion of Orleans Volunteers, otherwise known as Ploche's Battalion. And I basically told the kids about the role the battalion played during the campaign from December 23rd all the way through the first week of March. Our guys were in the firefight on December 23rd. They, they were placed in the center of the line out on Chalmette Battlefield. Um, they were, the main force of the, of the battalion probably didn't fire a shot on January 8th because no British units came close to them. But uh, one of the cavalry troops that the companies that they had were, were dispatched to fire cannons, to fire a howitzer in the redoubt on Battery 1, I would imagine they were fighting for their lives for most of that day. To the right, about face. With the left. I'm the captain of this artillery piece, this four pounder here, it's a naval cannon. And we have uh, several people that make this happen. There's six people on every piece. We have the uh, person here that is the worm. He searches the piece. We have the person here that is the thumb stall. And he's the one that puts the quill or the primer into the charge. This is the person that handles the cartridge from the back of the case to the cannon. And then we have here the lint stock, and that is the trigger for the cannon. And then we have man the piece. Tan bent, search piece. Clear. Advanced sponge, sponge piece. Okay, it's a four pound naval cannon and it's made uh, actually on a carriage that's uh, accurate to a naval ship. Uh, it has the wooden trucks and, and all that, so it's uh, actually pretty accurate. What role did this play in the battle? Well, these cannons were brought out to fight the, the, the British when they came, of course, and all cannons were on hand as we could find, so they took all the cannons they could find. How effective a weapon was it? Well, it's smooth bore, and it probably wasn't very accurate, but as long as you uh, had a cannon crew that was experienced enough, they could make that ball happen. Advance cartridge! Ram down cartridge! I think it's a great value that people know the actual history that went down instead of what just was written in books, but to actually come out and get your hands dirty and your feet dirty and see what it's like to actually live back then. Hold on. Shoulder, palms. Right, face. Forward, march. I represent the 3rd uh, Regiment of the Louisiana Militia, mostly Islanos, and uh, they were primary scouts uh, for Jackson uh, and the first uh, trigger for the advancing forces. How vital were they? 
Well, they were the eyes of Jackson. They were the ones that brought uh, the reports of where people were going. Uh, they were also very helpful in guiding uh, the other troops that weren't familiar with this area uh, to the places they had to go when they were sent somewhere. It's, uh, it's important to pass it on because I don't think history is really well taught anymore in the schools. I, maybe it is too much history, I don't know. But uh, this particular battle, the Battle of New Orleans, was rated by military historians as a, one of the top 15 battles of the Western Hemisphere as far as its importance in uh, the advancement of the Western culture. The Battle of New Orleans was important for two principal reasons. One, it guaranteed America's ownership of the Mississippi Valley. And by the Americans retaining ownership of the valley, the future destiny of the United States was guaranteed as a global power. Had the Americans lost the Mississippi Valley, there could have been no westward expansion to the Pacific Ocean. And we undoubtedly would not have emerged as the global power that we did in the 20th century and that we still are today. So very important in that context. Perhaps another almost equally important context is that the Battle of New Orleans redefined who was an American. There were enslaved Africans, free people of color, Native Americans, descendants of French and Spanish colonists, Portuguese, Italians, all of these people fighting as Americans. So that the definition of the United States having a diversity-based identity is in large measure forged in the Battle of New Orleans. I'm actually uh, representing the Tennessee militia. I uh, would have been with Andrew Jackson. Uh, we would have actually just been fresh off the Creek campaign, and we would have uh, been in Horseshoe Bend, Alabama, and we would have fought the Creek Indians there, and we learned a valuable lesson at that battle. Uh, we actually encountered an earthen wall uh, in this great Indian village of, of uh, 200 uh, men, women, and children, and they were behind this big earthen wall, and we brought some artillery, and uh, six-pound artillery pieces, and they were ineffective. And uh, we learned that lesson, and, and I think maybe that uh, might have spurred Andrew Jackson's thought at the Shaman Battlefield, possibly. Well, I'm part of the Barataria crew. Uh, what we've done is that uh, there was a decision by the Louisiana legislature to pardon John Lafitte and his group for any crimes they may have committed prior to the battle. At that point, Mr. Lafitte volunteered to bring his troops, his powder, which we're going to bring out in a few minutes, and all the supplies and cannons and people who knew how to fight in the swamp because they did not want the British here. My uniforms were tattered. We, we were on campaign for a long time. Um, you're talking from 1812, um, Fort Mims. So we would have we would have went through the whole Creek campaign, and our uniforms were tattered and very ragtag group when we got here, and we were fortunate enough to be resupplied with uniforms and uh, fresh clothing, weaponry, and uh, black powder was uh, actually a shortage. And the Baratarians, if it wouldn't been for Jean Lafitte and Andrew Jackson and a handshake, you know, this might not have been because with, without um, Jean Lafitte and the powder and the flints, and he had ball and he had all the supplies that. Jackson was needed at this particular moment in time. So the Baratarians were just a, an awesome group that to, to actually step up and for us to just basically be on campaign and continuing on through the battle and just to be resupplied. And now I'm back to being Jackson's eyes and ears and back where I'm supposed to be on the front lines protecting this far flank. I'm actually hanging out with the Choctaw Indians and uh, that's kind of what we're doing right now. The role that I'm playing would be a citizen of the city of New Orleans who along with um, many of the other citizens put in their effort to try to support the troops. Today we are cooking, which was common. They did send meals out to the areas where they um, where the, the soldiers were. Other things they would have done would have been sewing, coats, um, gathering, extra clothing. As we know, we had lots of militia companies who came in that were very poorly clothed, ill-suited for the weather here. And um, so, you know, the, the citizens of New Orleans had a great effort, um, not only the militia, the men who went and fought, but also the women who played their role in the city to try to support the war efforts and the troops who came in. You're cooking a traditional meal that would have been served in the War of 1812. Tell us about it. So what we're serving is chicken and dumplings. 
These are recipes like this can be found all the way back into the late 1600s. And we know that this was a common camp food, easy to cook over a camp because it's um, like a stew that needs to be boiled over time, but because you add the dumpling in, it makes it a thick, hearty meal. So in the winter time or for a hungry soldier who needs some sustenance, that's a really good meal to have. It's got your vegetables, your meat, easily put together. You can sit it and let it go for a while. How difficult was it uh, to obtain the ingredients for these type of meals during the uh, Battle of New Orleans? Well, they wouldn't always be able to have a full meal. This would have been a luxury. Um, Battle in New Orleans, um, because New Orleans is surrounded by farmland, plantations, there was an abundance of um, at least fresh food that we would grow here. And, you know, like in any war, animals, cattle, um, pigs and that were procured from the landowners, and which sometimes they were compensated. You know, we, we need to take all of your cows, but here's some money, or we will pay you at some point. And, and that, that's common, and that's what they did as well. Um, like I said, the surrounding area here, this was farmland, so it was relatively easy. Tell us uh, what goes through your mind when you describe uh, this uh, type of uh, life to the, ch the school children that were here today. The students really don't understand that you can't just heat something up in two seconds and it's ready to go. This, this meal today, once we got the fire started after about 45 minutes, took three hours to prepare and be ready, and it is just now ready. We started at seven o'clock this morning. Why is it important that, uh, that young people and all people uh, learn this history? Well, you know, if you don't get a good appreciation of your past and the lives that people live before you, you don't appreciate how easy you have it here. I mean, in the United States, we have a fairly easy lifestyle. There are still countries around the world that they cook over a fire because they don't have access to a kitchen. And, you know, just because that was our life in 1815, that doesn't mean that there aren't still places who go that. So I think it, it's good to get an appreciation of that. And then as they learn about their world and how different it is in different parts of the world, they have some little cue that, oh, these people have to still do this. They don't get to, you know, use a, a clean oven and, and sanitary situations, you know? I'm a cook on board one of the vessels owned by Jean Lafitte. And we'll be cooking for the men in camp today. What's it like to do that? It's a daunting task. There's a lot of men we have to feed. Where'd you get the food to feed them? We were get, uh, tasked to go into the city and get whatever provisions we could find. How cooperative were the, the city residents to help out the soldiers? They had no choice. I represent uh, a member of the Battalion d'Orléans, the New Orleans Militia, also known as Plochet's Battalion. What role did they play in the battle? Uh, the Plochet's Battalion served in Line Jackson during the battle and uh, uh, was mainly the shopkeepers, uh, middle class uh, volunteers to protect the city of New Orleans from invaders. How vital was that? Uh, it was, uh, General Jackson said everybody was needed, and the battalion uh, joined thousands of other volunteers for this effort. What message are you sending to the students uh, and uh, the adults that are here today? Uh, that the American Revolution was actually completed on January 8th, 1815, when the United States defeated the British invasion and established itself as an independent country. This battle had not only implications for New Orleans history, Louisiana history, United States history, but world history. If Pakenham had won, the British would have sent thousands of troops to occupy the lower Mississippi River Valley. Those troops would not have been six months later at Waterloo and Napoleon could have won. My name is Maria Genovese. I teach fifth grade at Coach Hale Elementary in St. Bernard Parish. How many students you bring out here today and what are they learning? Brought about 88 students out here and we're learning about the Battle of New Orleans. Why is it important that uh, students learn this? It's important that students learn the history about the Battle of New Orleans because it's where they grew up. So it's important that they know the history about where they grew up at. I'm a fifth grade teacher and the value for the kids to come out here is for hands-on learning to learn about the Battle of New Orleans. What kind of response have you had from the children so far? Uh, they seem to be very excited. Um, they're getting a little chitty chatty but they're doing a great job. I think they're really enjoying it. What do you think of the reenactors? Uh, they're great. They're really they're doing a great job. Why is it important that this history be passed down to students as well as adults? 
Um, a lot of people, I think, don't really know the, about the Battle of New Orleans and how it really started in this location where it's at um, and how New Orleans started. I think it's um, very important for the children to learn because they do live in this area as well. We're trying to teach the Battle of New Orleans to, to the children because we want them to un understand and know where the heritage of Greater New Orleans comes from and actually uh, a lot of these children don't really know the background of the Battle of New Orleans. What's the difference between learning in the classroom out of a textbook or a computer and coming out here? The difference between the, the learning in the classroom and the textbook is because they can see and actually understand with the visual of how these people lived back in the Battle of New Orleans in, in 1815. I learned here today is that um, that the British got lost in the fog when they, and that um, led us win the war. And um, I learned what how the British carry their grenades. And um, next, um, the guy told me that we're going to learn about why they would put the little sword thing when they're gone instead of using a sword. I learned that women did a lot of work and people depend on them because they carried food, they made for them, and mostly made clothes from what they had and got a lot of stuff to supply for themselves. I learned that the American, the American soldiers were actually re very, very brave because they, they were um, brave enough to go, go and fight the British even though they thought they were going to get killed, but they didn't really get killed that much. I learned today that um, that the battle was really harsh and that it all started right here and barely anybody knows. What do you think about the fact that uh, such history took place right here? That is actually really cool because like where we like our school, JF Goche, where we live, that's like the Slenos and that's also where it all started. I learned how people um how they like how they um fought and how they um they cooked cuz they you cuz they just had to plant stuff they didn't go to a grocery and um how they fought but they used they had to make their own little jackets to keep warm and they be, they made everything that they had they didn't go buy anything that that um they wanted they just had to make stuff it's important that children learn the history of the Battle of New Orleans for two reasons. Uh, first is, this is one of the few times in our history where it didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter if you were white or black or rich or poor or whatever. Everybody got together and did and worked together the same way. Um, they beat the biggest, baddest army on the planet at that point. How can you not want to tell their story? How can you not want to be like that? Look at what this area, city, metro, region, everything can do if we all work together. How can you not want to learn that lesson? Well, sir, we don't know where we're going if we don't know where we've been. As one of the other gentlemen said, this is a very important battle. It probably helps cement the new United States because don't forget, Louisiana was only part of America for 12 years when the British came here. They basically were just now getting used to the place. I think it's most important that we're telling their stories. That The most important thing is the whole campaign is about ordinary guys doing extraordinary things to steal from the 610 stompers. I cannot imagine make, running six miles, walking 12, having a firefight for four hours and then going to dig the canal in front of Rampart in a, two, in a one and a half day span. I'd be passed out at the second, mi second mile of the run. I reflect on um, my ancestor who was in the Battle of New Orleans. His name was Jean Laurent Pellegrin. Um, he was 45 at the time of the battle. And um, to get a glimpse of what he would have went through having to leave home um, voluntarily to defend um, New Orleans, uh, it means a lot because I feel that I would not be here today um, if it wasn't for uh, the courageous efforts then. This effort on the part of parish government and the school board in St. Bernard Parish has been very well received. We have several hundred students here now, and we look forward to doing this again in the future. We hope to do it annually, and in such a way that it will complement whatever it is that the National Park Service is able to do in the future. And then, of course, for more information about this event and other events, please go to the St. Bernard Parish tourism site.